uterus. On my fifth birthday, they discovered that my mother had cancer and the doctor said she had to have her uterus removed. We all got into that Subaru and went to the hospital and waited till the doctor came out of the operating room with tears in his eyes. Never ever have I seen such a beautiful uterus, he said as he removed his surgical mask. I feel like a murderer. My mother really did have a beautiful uterus, so beautiful that the hospital donated it to the museum. And on Saturday we went there specially and my uncle took a picture of us next to it. My dad was no longer in the country by then. He divorced mom the day after the operation. A woman without a uterus is no woman. And a man who stays with a woman who's no woman is no man himself. He told my older brother and me a second before he got onto the plane to Alaska. When you grow up, you understand. The room where they had my mom's uterus on display was all dark. The only light came from the uterus itself, which shone with a kind of gentle glow, like the inside of a plane on a night flight. In pictures it didn't look like anything much because of the flash, but when I saw it up close, I could understand perfectly well why it had the doctor in tears. You came out of there. You were like princess living in there. Eventually my mother died. Eventually all mothers die. And my dad became a famous Arctic explorer and whaler. The girls I dated always used to take it the wrong way when I'd peek at their uterus. They thought it was some kind of gynecological hang-up, which is a definite turn-off. But one of them, with a good sturdy build, agreed to marry me. I used to spank our kids a lot, right from infancy, because their crying got on my nerves. And the truth is, they learned their lesson fast and stopped crying for good by the time they were nine months, if not earlier. In the beginning, I'd take them to the museum on their birthdays to show them their grandmother's uterus, but they didn't really get into it, and my wife would be pissed off. So little by little, I started taking them to the Walt Disney movies instead. One day my car was towed and the police lot was in the same neighborhood, so I dropped in at the museum while I was there. I saw that the uterus was all covered with tiny green dots. I asked the guard why nobody was keeping it clean, but he just shrugged. I begged the guy in charge of the exhibition to let me clean it off myself if they were short-stuffed, but the guy in charge was very nasty. He said I wasn't allowed to touch the exhibit because I wasn't a member of the staff. My wife said the museum was 100% right and that as far as she was concerned, displaying a uterus in a public institution is sick, especially when the place is full of children. But I couldn't think of anything else. Just like my dad that night on the step of the plane, I knew exactly what I had to do. Two days later, I took a van from work and arrived at the museum just before it closed. My only problem was that the uterus itself had disappeared. The guy in charge of the exhibition was kind of surprised to see me. But when I showed the butt of my new Jerry who dip in his throat, he was very quick to cough up the information. The uterus had been sold the day before to a Jewish philanthropist who had stipulated that it should be sent to one of the community centers in Alaska. On the way there, it had been hijacked by a few people from the local chapter of the Ecological Front. 
The Front issued a press release announcing that a uterus doesn't belong in captivity, which was why they decided to set it free in the natural surroundings. The psychological front was radical and dangerous. Its whole operation was run from a pirate ship commanded by the retired Wheeler. The whole way home, all the lights were red. I just kept swearing from line to line without bothering to look in the mirror. I tried to imagine my mother's uterus in the middle of a green, dew-covered field, floating in an ocean full of dolphins and tuna.